dear viewers. Today we're going to show you Azerbaijan. This is a country located in the southern Caucasus, right next to the Caspian Sea. Its capital is Baku, and there are 9 million people living in this country. Azerbaijan is also called the land of fire. It has rich deposits of oil and natural gas. It has a lot of mud volcanoes and natural fires. Azerbaijani culture is blend of East and West with influences predominantly from Middle Eastern, Turkish and post-Soviet cultures. Most of the population of Azerbaijan are Azerbaijanis themselves, known also as Azeris. There are a lot of minority groups including Russians, Turkish people, Kurds, Lesgis and Talish. Another thing Azerbaijan is very very much famous for is its variety of food. So when you come to this country, make sure to be on a diet for a few days in advance because the amount of delicious food here is astounding. Maiden's Tower is the oldest building inside Icheri Sheher, the old town of Baku city. It was believed to be built around 12th century. Some of the opinions believe that this tower has been used as an observatory, while others say that it was the first Zoroastrian temple built. <laughs> so now we are in Icheri Shekher, in the old town of Baku, with where there is also artisanal market here, everything is handmade. I was looking for some handmade stuff and cups and for tea, and now I found this. Mmm, that is just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, you can, you can use it for putting candies and stuff table decoration. Let's go explore more. Today it is Nebrus week in Middle East countries, so now we're going to celebrate. These are some traditional Azerbaijani sweets for Novruz Bayram and here you have Pahlava, you have Shaker Bura and you have uh, Kata. So very good tasty stuff and with some tea of course as usual. Here we go. How can I not taste it? Although I already tasted it. Mm. Godly taste as usual. This is the Heydar Aliyev Center. It's named after the third president of Azerbaijan Republic. The center is famous for its fluid shape, which the architects intended as a reaction to the rigid architecture of Soviet era, as well as the reference to Islamic calligraphy and elements of traditional Azeri architecture. Bazaars are a very important part of Azerbaijani culture. Literally in bazaars you can buy anything you need from uh, spices, tea, fruits and vegetables, fish, various meat products and also caviar. Azerbaijani people love going to bazaars and buying everything fresh at one spot. So we are right now in the Yashul Bazaar in Baku and we've seen a lot of nice fresh vegetables, foods, amazing products 
So here we're gonna try a fresh pomegranate juice. It should be very, very tasty. So I'm gonna go ahead. Mm. You should seriously try it. It's sweet, a little bit sour, but extremely refreshing. And it's very good for you. So come to Yashul Bazaar, have some pomegranate juice. Cheers. Halva from Sheki, made mostly made of nuts. Very lots of sugar and syrup, and on top of this red thing, it's a rose petal water, which is used for decoration and some additional taste. It's a very, very sweet dessert, so not everyone might like it, but local people really enjoy to drink it with tea. Mm. Not popcorn. Black caviar. Black caviar. Mmm. Actually, very good. Good. Mm -hmm. So today we're finally getting to taste some real Azerbaijani cuisine, and for a starter, we have here some white sheep cheese, motal pindiri, which is also a salty variation of of a sheep cheese, and mangal salad, which is made of uh, eggplants coriander, you have tomatoes, you have pepper and all of this mixed together in some amazing flavors. So let's give it a try, shall we? Mm. It's, it's so savory actually, it's so soft in texture. It's lovely. You should definitely try it. Try sheep cheese, which is called motel, together with a combination with Baku tomatoes, red onions, and Cornelian cherry sauce. I've heard that's the best combination. Mm. Mm. And we also have some gutaps here made with meat and also with spinach. It's also traditional Azeri food. So, tastes delicious. We're gonna try it as well. So here we have a such, which is basically a small plate with some lamb meat, potatoes, all the vegetables. It's very, very delicious. So, let's go ahead and dip our bread into this amazing sauce. And of course, look at all this amazingness in this bread. Mm. Very good. Now, of course, some local lamb meat. It's very delicious. That's the taste of I've been missing in Europe all this time. You guys should come over and definitely try some such in Azerbaijan. As for the dessert, we have a pumpkin with some banana, cream cheese and some strawberry. So, coupled with some black tea and ground timian for additional flavors. You guys can taste it. I'm pretty sure it's very nice. Mm. Very unusual, but it's really delicious. And it's very sweet too. <laughs> Have a sip of this amazing tea. Mm. This is my childhood nostalgia. That's how you should drink a black tea with ground tea milk. Try it. So, guys, this is a specialty here. This is a, a leaves of the red basil, which only actually you can find in Caucasus or in the Asian region. And it's a very popular spice or um, stuff that they use in many dishes around here. And not only in dishes, they also prepare drinks out of this thing. So it's sweet and sour a little bit, but it's very, very nice. So I'm gonna taste it. Very refreshing. Slightly sweet, sour, but very refreshing. Good stuff. Good. 
So, how was your shashlik? I'm eating baranin shashlik, mutton shashlik. And how does it taste? Mmm, very good. I want more. <laughs> Yeah, I see you have some fish actually there as well, so that's next on the line, I guess. Here we're standing beside the Yanar Duck, which is the eternally burning fire, constantly burning on this hillside in the Apsheron Peninsula in nearby Baku. So what you see here is basically a fire coming from the natural gas and it's been burning according to different sources somewhere from 1,000 up to 4,000 years. There's also a common interesting fact or a belief that if you toss a copper coin into the fire it is for good luck or you can make a wish. Zoroastrianism religion. This religion was created in Iran. Mm -hmm. This religion prophet name is Zoroaster. Mm -hmm. This religion holy book was Avesta. Fire was sacred for them. Yeah. They start to live here in the second century. Why? Because in Azerbaijan this place has a natural fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fire was sacred for them, therefore they came here, they start uh -huh. to live in this temple second century mm -hmm. till seventh century. Period. Mm -hmm. They came here 16th, 17th centuries. Mm -hmm. Why? You know that the Silk Road mm -hmm. started mm -hmm. to China yeah. and finished to Turkey. Yes, yes. Therefore, 16th, 17th centuries, when the merchants, majority Indian merchants, mm -hmm. came or passed Azerbaijan mm -hmm. places, they saw natural fire. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And when they came back to Mazala, they started to talk about this uh -huh. temple to the people. Uh -huh. Therefore, 16th, 17th centuries, mm -hmm. Zoroastrianism religion. Hinduism religion and Sikhism religion. The Sikh religion, they came here, mm -hmm. they start to live in this temple again till 1883. Why? Yeah. Because 1883 natural fire finished. Uh -huh. Why? Because around the temple, people started to extract it. Oil. To do what? Extract it oil. Uh -huh. And behind the temple, people start to build kerosene plant. Uh -huh. Therefore, natural fire. Today, when we go to the other country, we stay in a hotel. Yes, but ancient time people say that Karwansara. So, there is a warning sign for snakes. I am doubting if I should continue my road here. There is another one up there. <laughs> no, oh my god. It's cold now, they are just hiding between the rocks. They come out when it's warm and sunny again. Let's go enjoy them in the car. Let me. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> I'm going to have mine. Mm. Let's roll. Uh -huh. Azerbaijan has 9 out of 11 climate zones. As we were making our way from uh, Gobustan to Gabala, which is another city, the weather rapidly changed into a very snowy one, as you can see.
So we are now in Gebele region of Azerbaijan and we are in the Gebele Fanlar restaurant. It's a very cozy place here between the mountains. So we, as usual we came to taste delicious Azerbaijani meals and we start of course with the cold uh, dishes first. So Greta, if you could say what you have here in front of I you. I can't wait to try. Yeah. So here we have again mangal salad, which uh, which uh, described before. Yeah. And it became our favorite, so that's why I'm gonna yeah, it have basically again. has uh, eggplant mm. and tomatoes and coriander, very very tasty, mm. delicious ingredients, and in that one. Some Georgian ajita sal uh, salad. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and awesome. some. We have here some uh, tandir bread, which is basically baked or made in the clay oven and it's still very, very warm, mm, it's, it's very so delicious. Warm. Freshly made bread, mm. what can be better? Of course, we have here some sour cabbage uh, salad variations and we have here beetroot salad with some garlic and some nuts. And local farm cheese. Yes, yeah. it comes from the Ismaili region, it's the white bio sheep cheese. Mm. It's very, very good stuff. So Can't let's wait dig to in. Try. Here we have a chirutma dish, which is a traditional Azerbaijani dish made of chicken, mm -hmm. potatoes, and tomatoes. First of all, all these ingredients here are fried. Then, in this magnificent um, dish here, covered with the lid, and then put it in the oven for a bit more time to create more softer texture. Let's Mm. Does it taste good? Absolutely. Nice. So, for our dessert, dear viewers, here we have, of course, as it's a very big tradition in Azerbaijan to drink tea, we have some tea uh, made with the thyme, dried thyme as the essence. And you would ask here, what is in this jar, which is a red color? That doesn't really look like the tea, right? Mm. This, in fact, is the rose petal water. It's being added into the tea for some extra sort of flowery taste. Yeah. And it's really good and it's quite traditional. So, as for the sweets, here we have on the first line some halva, uh, which is basically, this is a sesame halva. It's basically like, um, uh, like a spread, a sweet spread made of, uh, hal uh, made of sesame seeds. Here you have uh, black halva which is made from the grape juice which has been stirred and cooked to a very thick substance and as you can see when it hardens it becomes quite yeah quite a hard uh, thing and yeah here we also have some um, nuts halva basically yeah which is a sweet spread made of nuts as for the jams here traditional azerbaijani watermelon jam uh, it's don't ask me, it's yellow, but it is a watermelon jam. <laughs> so, and we have here some strawberry jam, of course. And this here are traditional Azerbaijani pastries, which are called Uchbulak, basically a triangle. And it's basically sort of like a baklava, but it has some uh, nuts and everything. So, very delicious stuff. Let's taste it. I'm going to try now. Mm, very different actually tastes. Different mm -hmm. tonality. Yeah. I so feel some fruit sweet taste. Mm -hmm. you mix it with some oxygen and it's going to open up and become more fruity and light. Thank 
Wow. Red wine. Mm, I really like, love the taste. It is important to create either a combination or a contrast when drinking wines, so that's why some dried fruit and cheese plate always helps to enjoy wines to the fullest. Now I just tried with dried plums, now I'll try with gorgonzola cheese. It somehow has smoky taste, this dried plums. Mm -hmm. Did you feel? Okay. Now we're gonna explore some Azerbaijanian dolma, which is different from dolma in other countries because it's hot. And it's made of also wine leaves, meat basically wrapped in wine leaves and with some gatik, which is sour milk. Yeah. So you have to combine those together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Just, I'm afraid it's... Give it a well. taste. Mm. Good, right? of a niche in Azerbaijan is one of those villages where the minority of Christian Albanian people actually live and um, it's such a small minority of people that um, their language and their culture is in the danger of extinction sort and uh, yeah this church right here niche church is one of the uh, few ones in, in Azerbaijan which is still uh, preserved in its very natural state. So, we're in the Udi Cultural Center in Niš. Mm -hmm. Gonna go see the museum, but yeah, that's how the people, that's their little cultural reservation here. Yeah, some of their old tools. Mm -hmm. 